Spiders These eight-legged creatures elicit fear and aversion in a lot of people. The question is, why is it that these mostly harmless animals are so scary and aversive? And what are the neural mechanisms that underlie this fear? These questions and much more will be addressed in this video. Welcome to Psyched! Having an aversion or a fear of spiders is something that is seen in many cultures around the world. This aversion seems to develop during the first 10 years of our lives. At first glance, the presence of an aversion or fear of spiders across many cultures, combined with its early emergence during childhood, would suggest that a fear of spiders may be innate. However, whether this fear or aversion of spiders is innate or not is still a matter of debate. Proponents of the notion that spider fear is innate argue that humans are neurologically wired to fear animals that can harm us. And because some spiders are dangerous to humans, the fear of spiders is presumably evolutionary adaptive. In contrast, scientists that are against the idea that spider fear is innate argue that worldwide only a few species of spiders are actually able to produce significant harm to humans. Because of this, it is argued that this fear or aversiveness towards spiders therefore could not be predicated on an innate avoidance behavior towards dangerous animals. These critics also raise the argument that there are multiple studies that seem to indicate that there are cultural differences in this fear and aversiveness against spiders. The presence of these cultural differences also go against the notion that spider fear is innate. Regardless of whether spider fear is innate or learned, most of us are able to go through life without really caring about spiders. In the rare occasions that we do encounter a spider, at most we might react by being a bit creeped out. However, in a small proportion of the population, the fear and anxiety that they experience in the presence of spiders is so intense that it goes way beyond what's considered rational. In these people, this fear and anxiety is so intense that it becomes a phobia. This is known as arachnophobia. Arachnophobia is one of the most prevalent types of phobias affecting around 3-6% of the population. The fear and anxiety that arachnophobes experience when they encounter a spider causes clinically significant distress and often includes symptoms such as dizziness, hot or cold flashes, feelings of losing control, as well as an increased heart rate. As a result, arachnophobes will experience significant distress whenever they encounter a spider and they will actively avoid any potential interaction with them. They may in some cases refuse to be in nature or in any other areas where they believe that they might encounter a spider. As previously mentioned, the innateness of the aversiveness or fear of spiders is still a matter of debate. But what about in the extreme case of a phobia of spiders? Well. The development of arachnophobia seems to be caused by both genetic and environmental factors. For example, kids who have parents with a prominent fear or anxiety about spiders may have a higher risk of developing arachnophobia. By observing this intense fear and anxiety towards spiders from their parents, their children could model this avoidant behavior towards spiders and may also develop an intense fear and anxiety towards spiders that might eventually evolve into a phobia. Arachnophobia could also be caused by having a traumatic experience with spiders during childhood or as an adult. This causes them to experience an intense fear and anxiety about potential future interactions with the animal. Beyond these environmental factors, research also shows that people run a higher risk of developing arachnophobia if they have a genetic predisposition for anxiety disorders and other phobias. Research on the topic of arachnophobia has also focused on its neurocorrelates. One study for example used fMRI to look at what's going on in the brain when arachnophobes encounter a spider. What they found was that when arachnophobes are presented with video clips of spiders, they show an increased activation in their parahippocampal gyrus and in their right dorsolateral prefrontal cortex. When interpreting these results, the increased activation of the parahippocampal gyrus was suggested to possibly reflect the automatic reactivation of the contextual fear memory that led to the development and the maintenance of their phobia. What this means is that the increased activity of the parahippocampal gyrus may reflect the retrieval of the traumatic memory that led to the development of this intense fear of spiders. 
On the other hand, the increased activation of the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex was suggested to possibly reflect the use of metacognitive strategies that are aimed at self-regulating this intense fear and anxiety that arachnophobes experience in response to spiders. Thus, while the parahippocampal gyrus may be associated with the reliving of this traumatic memory that led arachnophobes to develop their phobia, the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex may in turn be involved in trying to rationalize these fears and to possibly even suppress them. Further research on the topic reveals several lines of EEG research that consistently show enhanced amplitudes for several event-related potentials among arachnophobes as compared to controls when they are presented with spider-related stimuli. These event-related potentials, or ARPs, includes the P300 as well as the Late Positive Potential, or LPP. As these ARPs have been linked to selective attention, these studies reflect an attentional bias among arachnophobes which makes them a lot more vigilant when they encounter a spider. Beyond these studies, spider phobia has also been linked to increased activation of several brain regions including, but not limited to, the insula, the dorsal anterior cingulate cortex, as well as the ventrolateral prefrontal cortex. In conclusion, while the research described in this video only scratches the surface on the topic of arachnophobia, the findings point to the complexity of the condition. Arachnophobia involves a complex series of neurological processes as well as genetic and environmental factors that contribute to its development and maintenance. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to drop us a like and to subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to ring that notification bell and we'll see you in the next video.